Hi, I'm Sky Perry with SSP Innovations, and uh, today I wanted to explore a topic we get a lot of questions on when discussing options around going with ArcGIS Online or Portal for ArcGIS. Uh, one of the major areas that we think you need to make this decision on is authentication. And so I wanted to come in here today and talk a little bit about authentication options for ArcGIS Online and Portal for ArcGIS, uh, just so it might help in your decision making. So I've got a, a pre-drawn board here. Uh, we've got ArcGIS.com, which is ArcGIS Online, drawn out here. Uh, I've also got Portal. I'll come back to Portal in a moment. Uh, I'm not really focusing on architecture as far as getting to the geodatabase, but I kind of just represented that uh, from our other architectures. ArcGIS.com can go through a DMZ web adapter and get to the back office geodatabase. We'll assume it has data. So let's focus in on the authentication options for ArcGIS Online. Now, the most easy approach, and what we've done with 99% of our customers who have implemented ArcGIS.com is to use the native local user store. So when I say local users, when you create your ArcGIS Online organization, you by default have a uh, user within that organization. And we can then go ahead and create additional local users. Uh, you know, here at SSP, we use first name dot last name underscore SSP. So I could create one of those for every user in my company here and provide them access. Now, uh, the upside of this is I could do this in, in minutes, literally minutes. I can upload it from a file, I can type it in, it does not take very long. Uh, it will assign them a uh, password initially as they start to sign up, and then they can set their own password once they've logged in. Very typical for a website uh, out there on the internet. Uh, so it works very, very good like that. The downside, of course, is you're already probably reading into it, that you're creating your own uh, password for your account. And it's one more password to, uh, to track and to monitor, to change on a regular basis. And the other big downside is because we're not tapping into your back office Active Directory uh, uh, data store here, that this user, if, if, we, if somebody leaves the organization, something like that, we can't just turn off the Active Directory account and, and get rid of their access here. So you'd have to have a step, a manual step, to go out to ArcGIS.com and delete or perhaps just disable uh, that local user account within ArcGIS.com. So that's the downside. Uh, it's not truly an enterprise approach. Uh, but again, the upsides in this case usually outweigh it, which is it's really easy to set these up and you can get users access very quickly. So local users, big plus. Next way, you know, if you say, hey, that's absolutely not going to work with us and we still want to work with ArcGIS.com, uh, the second way to get out here is to actually put in something to do with your LDAP or your Active Directory authentication. And we do, almost everybody has Active Directory these days, so we're going to uh, specifically kind of hone in on Active Directory, but they support other LDAPs as well, uh, Esri that is, and there's a lot more information online. Uh, to do this is doable, but it's a little bit tricky here. Uh, so I want to talk through some ins and outs there. So of course, Active Directory is always behind the firewall in your back office. This has your users here at SSP. We have a, a domain SSP backslash, and I'm S. Perry, uh, many other users throughout the organization. I want to use that account to get access to this third-party site, ArcGIS.com. So the key here, and this is not an area of expertise for me, I'll be honest with you, but it's an area I've learned a little bit about by working with some other good professionals in the area. It's called ADFS, or Active Directory uh, federated services. So this is another piece, there's a server in here, and I don't know the details behind it all because that's not my area, but they're taking this Active Directory and they are exposing through the firewall represented here in red, your Active Directory uh, ability to sign on. This can either be fed directly out to ArcGIS.com or you can create an actual site that is a login site that you host that allows the user to authenticate against Active Directory and essentially say, hey, this is a valid authenticated user back to ArcGIS Online. But the key here, either way, is that we need to be able to talk to ADFS from ArcGIS.com and ADFS is managing, uh, brokering the data to Active Directory. Uh, when we talk about the details here, uh, this is a, you know, getting this set up is not trivial. I want to be honest about that. I've had really only one account that has gotten uh, to the point where they they're, have gotten this working. Uh, you get the ADFS endpoints exposed to the internet, that's first key point. And then when you get here, you're actually taking a series of metadata files and, and loading uh, in both directions. So your ADFS will either provide a URL, that's an internet URL, 
and or a metadata XML file that we could take and load into ArcGIS.com, which says, okay, for authentication, we're going to go against this endpoint with Active Directory. And then also ArcGIS.com, then uh, the opposite direction, generates a URL and or an XML metadata file that we have to tell ADFS about. And that allows AD to say, okay, we trust ArcGIS.com with this authentication information. We're then configuring some specific information going back and forth, uh, like the actual name of the user, uh, we're putting in there usually the email address, et cetera, a few other attributes that we pass from Active Directory back to ArcGIS.com. Now the mechanism by which this happens is something called SAML. And I'm not going to go into the details of SAML, but you can Google that. It's a, a security markup language and there's a lot more information out there. So pretty, pretty high tech, pretty cool if you can get this working. Uh, I just want you to understand that there's some uh, detailed challenges there. And if you have a, don't have a super strong Active Directory group within your organization, there might be some challenges there to get that. So these are the reasons that we've mostly stuck with local users as far as our uh, authentication patterns for getting uh, our JS Alliance set up very quickly. So hopefully that makes sense. We're authenticated here. We come back in through the DMZ. We can get data. Everything works one way or the other there. So the question then, okay, so that's ArcGIS Online. What about Portal for ArcGIS? And why is that different? Or perhaps easier or, or more challenging, right? So Portal for ArcGIS, you'll notice, is a server instance that will live in the back office. It could be on the same box as your ArcGIS for server. Uh, could be on its own dedicated box. Either way, it is an actual installation. Now, as a reminder, Portal for ArcGIS is effectively bringing ArcGIS.com on-premise, right? This side of the firewall, you own this. The key here is that this box is already going to be registered with Active Directory. It'll be an Active Directory server. It already knows about Active Directory, so these are associated by default. So just the pure simple fact, and again, we can't have ArcGIS.com serve this role behind the firewall because it's out there, right? It's on the other side. So the simple fact that this is behind our firewall on our infrastructure makes this really easy. We can actually put in a very simple JSON, which is just another uh, technology, but there's a, there's a string that we can plug into Portal to allow it to talk to Active Directory. And it's as simple as taking a service user on your Active Directory, plugging it in and giving it read-only access to Active Directory. Voila, Portal can then access Active Directory natively. So now we've got Portal that has taken the place of ArcGIS.com in this case. It natively and very easily will allow you to do uh, authentication using Active Directory. So that's the big upside here is we don't have to worry about exposing ADFS out to the uh, internet, et cetera. The big downside, of course, is that we do have to install a lot of infrastructure for Portal. We have to support Portal, and there's a total cost of ownership of that, not just for the implementation, but again, including support costs over a period of years. So there are some trade-offs. So when people say, what is the biggest difference you can call it between ArcGIS Online and Portal, my two key points I always talk about are authentication, the topic of this video, and then, of course, the finance-related aspect of, of the money it takes to both stand it up and support it. Both are great options. We're now seeing more and more users that do both. Maybe they use a combination of ArcGIS Online and Portal in the back office. In either case, it's going to provide you the tools that you need for today for exposing your maps to everyone in the organization. It's also going to set utilities up for the future once we start moving toward the utility network, which will be focused on services based and hosted through either ArcGIS Online or Portal. Thanks for your time. Them live men, them fine men, straight masterpieces. Zooming, panning, disconnected in the city. Inspecting, perfecting. Gotta kiss this map, it's so pretty. We're too high. Hot man. Promise of a room to catch fire, man. Too hot. Hot man. Make a rival start to press fire, man. Too hot. Hot man. Man, SSP, you know who we are. We're too hot. Hot man. We fly the mouth, case studies, break it down. Real crew, hallelujah. Designers, hallelujah. Managers, hallelujah. Cause GIS gon' give it to you. Cause GIS gon' give it to you.